Thank you and welcome. Um, I'm glad that everybody here this evening has been able to join us. I'm personally very excited to be participating in this hangout that's brought to you by National Rally Car uh, with several of the people in technology and travel that I have some of the greatest respect for as well as some great friends. Um, I'm also especially thrilled that it's National Car Rental that is uh, hosting this this evening. Um, you know, I'm uh, personally an executive elite member of National. I've rented with them already this week, and I'll be renting with them again tomorrow. Uh, so I'm, you know, personally very experienced with what really is the original breakthrough concept in um, uh, rental cars and business travel, the Emerald Isle. And now that they've brought to their mobile app uh, into the space as well, that's really exciting uh, to boot. They just announced it this week with a press release uh, during the Global Business Travel Association convention. Um, you know, they had a big presence there, and it was. Uh, I think drumming up quite a bit of interest and this evening uh, with the hangout we're going to be talking about technology and travel where we've been where we are and what the future is um, and um, I'm going to ask all the participants if they can introduce themselves uh, in turn I'm Johnny Jet from johnnyjet.com and my good oh, buddy Scott sorry. yes sorry I'm distracted <laughs> I, uh, I'm Scott McKenzie. I write for HackMyTrip.com. And my name is Chris McGinnis. I'm a freelancer, so I've got a lot of different outlets. Um, probably best known as the business travel correspondent for BBC, and I also write for the San Francisco Chronicle website, SFGate. Great, and I'm uh, Rob Connors, System Vice President and Brand Director for the National Car Rental brand. Thanks for having me. Well, that's all outstanding. Some people know me, uh, Gary Leff, from viewfromthewing.com and from milepoint.com. I'm also very excited to have Rob. I uh, remember reading an interview of him in Inside Flyer magazine, and I saw that he was going to be a part of this, and I thought that was fantastic. Um, so thanks to everybody for joining us, and let's get things going. We're discussing the evolution of technology and travel, um, and let's start at the beginning. Uh, Johnny, what was to you the defining moment Moment in travel tech, what really sparked um, a, a change from the you know manual to the technological? Uh, you know, what uh, was it? GPS, online booking. Uh, what really was the first big step in business technology and travel? Well, I think for for me at least was being able to bring up your own flights and book them and not have to call the travel agent. You know, find out different things like what type of plane is it. Can I get this seat and all that stuff? I mean, that made a huge difference in terms of when I was traveling for business, you know, 15 years ago. And then, you know, of course, online maps. I mean, before, I used to sit there and read these maps, and I would always get lost. And then all of a sudden, the you know, the introduction of GPS, and next thing you know, you know, I'm getting to the places on time. <laughs> Funny, I, I still get lost. Uh, turn by turn <laughs> usually works for me, but um, I, you know, I mean, I remember uh, the very beginning for sure of uh, Expedia and the others, but but even Easy Saber. I mean, that was a, tr a tremendous uh, step forward. Chris, um, uh, how about you? What do you think? Yeah, well, I'm, pro I'm probably the, the the elder here, and I remember all the way back into the 1990s when you know there was no such thing as travel and technology. It was travel. Or technology, people didn't really, you know, combine the two until around 1998, when, you know, people could actually book online. And I remember at the time I was writing for the Atlanta Journal Constitution, and writing about being able to book a ticket on uh, delta-air.com, which was their URL back at the time. And um, I got in a lot of trouble with the PR folks because what I said in my column was that um, I I entered all the parameters of my trip. And then I went and ate a ham sandwich and came back and I had my reservation. That's how long it took then. And I think that what was probably happening is that I, I submitted all my, all my parameters for my trip and sent it off. And then it went to an agent who input it all on a computer and then sent me an email back saying, okay, your trip is booked. You know, I still actually type in, you know, you mentioned DeltaAir.com. I still type in IFLYSWA.com, <laughs> uh, and I still can't, I, I can't get myself to believe that Southwest uh, actually works. Uh, Chris, 
before that, though, right? I mean, you, you go and eat your ham sandwich. But before you had the ham sandwich uh, while you're booking your travel, uh, what was it like in the uh, in the Stone Age of um, you know cross country <laughs> turbo props and yeah. uh, how did it work back then? Well, you know, back then we all we were all very pleased to have our Palm Pilots. Can anybody remember those? That was the that was the coolest thing in the world back in the early early nineties. But we all used travel agents, and we relied on travel agents just like we rely on the internet now. So you know, back back in the day, uh, if you had to make uh, a reservation, you called you called your agent. If you had to make a change, you called your agent, um, and your agent had to uh, FedEx you tickets. That was you know that it's an amazing thing to think about now. But the the amount of money spent on FedExing tickets around the world to business travelers at the time, I was a consultant and had my tickets uh, FedEx to me every every. Uh, Every weekend, and then if you wanted to get a, a ticket at the airport, then you had to pay an extra seventy-five or a hundred dollars for them to produce a ticket for you at the airport. So I think you know before all this, we truly relied on travel agents, and then you know once once online booking came along, we truly relied on the internet. It became our travel agent. That's really great context, and you know what's really interesting to me is concomitant with the introduction of travel technology um, has been also a rise of you know, a greater level of comfort. I mean, I, when my upgrades don't clear, I don't always feel comfortable, right? But you know, comfort, um, you know, style and affordability in a lot of dimensions of travel concomitant with technology. I mean, some of it uh, is greater competition, but also that's spurring technology too, for sure. But all of these things seem to move together in many dimensions. Uh, you know, I certainly uh, travel more comfortably than I did then and I, I think not just because I'm senior enough uh, in my work not to take red eyes anymore um, you know the technological advancements uh, you know has made it more uh, more relaxed um, more efficient in a lot of ways when you're able to be in control of your travel have up to the minute information and uh, know what's going on with each part of your trip uh, and you're a lot less reliant I think on you know yeah. others to do the work for you uh, so what do you think uh, about that evolution of uh, style and comfort and affordability uh, along with technology. Uh, did you say Johnny or did you say Scott? No, I said uh, I said Johnny. Oh, okay. Sorry. Um, yeah, link, uh, no, I think the, the biggest thing is the airline teach right business class. Business class yeah. today yeah. is completely different than what it okay. was, okay. you know, 15 years ago. Especially, and including first class. I mean, now you can fly across the ocean in a suite, your own private. You know your own private room. I mean, it's amazing the comfort and you know, there's so much, there's so much um, entertainment options. There's not enough time. You think you think you're going to be on a plane and you're going to be so bored because you're going to be on this really long flight, and then you realize that with all the different, all the different uh, choices, that there's not enough time in these flights. And now they have Wi-Fi. I mean, it makes such a difference. Yeah, I mean, I uh, earlier this year I flew on one of uh, Etihad's planes with Wi-Fi. It was international. Um, I flew American with Wi-Fi as well. Of course, when I was flying Etihad, I had the great suites with the doors. Uh, American, I didn't have the suites, um, but it was a nice, uh, nice business class, uh, you know, seat too. I mean, things have certainly got, um, uh, you know. A, a lot different now than they than they were back in the day. Um, technology has certainly improved over the last couple of decades. Uh, what was the future when I first started traveling uh, is now what we're experiencing, and we've never been more efficient for sure, right? Business travel is certainly going to be a lot, uh, you know, a lot different than it once was. Um, at the same time, it's much more technological than ever, um, as well as t technologies like Google Hangout. This is the first time I'm experiencing this medium um, and the ability to. Um, Look, talk to you all uh, is something that you know wouldn't have existed when I was first traveling in the mid '90s uh, for work. Um, so we've seen brands like uh, you know where we're using our our phones and mobile technology introduce uh, the ability to control our travels. Uh, National Car Rental, for instance, with their new app um, that help us be more efficient as we're traveling. Uh, Scott. Uh, can you tell us what you, you think is doing it best in the uh, mobile app space? What travel brands are really doing uh, technology well now? I, I think there's been a lot of recent changes. I mean, just uh, last month, Starwood invited me to, to a trial program for uh, with their Aloft brand. They're throwing out a new deal where uh, you can get a permanent key card, and when you arrive at an Aloft hotel, they'll send you your room number so you don't have to check in. 
and all you need to do is go straight to your room and tap it, and you can get in. Uh, and so I imagine that kind of thing will be rolled yeah, out eventually. Still figuring that out? Oh, I'm good. I, uh, so, Johnny, um, tell me, um, uh, uh, do you have any experience with travel brands that are really yeah, taking advantage of technology? I mean, I, I, think the sorry, are doing a, I think the airlines are doing a great job with, with Twitter. I mean, if you have a problem these days, you don't have to sit on these long uh, holds on the phone. You can just sit there and tweet them. You know, just the other day, just recently I landed on KLM and the uh, flight attendant said, if you have any questions... You can just or Facebook us, and we will we will guarantee you um, respond within. Yeah. And same thing. American Airlines does an amazing job on Twitter. I can I can tweet them right now, and by the end of this uh, hangout, they will be responding. Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, it's certainly not just technology getting information, but becoming more personal. Um, it's tailoring things to the individual to their situation. Johnny, I think you're 100 percent right because you can get direct. Uh, feedback on your trip, not just information about your flight or how to get to or to a particular hotel, but what's the status of your reservation uh, and how can you get you know direct customer service with technology? I think that's a a real area that um, uh, companies have been able to improve on and is also an area uh, of great opportunity in the future where it's less about mass information and more about um, about tailored information. Um, I'm wondering if everyone wants to just sort of share their you know, favorite business tech uh, travel gadget or other technology. It's not just about the, the, the social media, but what do we all use uh, that improves our experiences? Uh, start since we've been talking to Johnny. We'll start with Johnny and then move to uh, Chris and then Scott. Well, smartphone. You know, I just got a new Windows. It's a Nokia 1020. Takes the most insane pictures of all time. It's 41 megapixels. I used to travel with these big cameras, and now I'm just walking around with this thing, which is which is a huge difference. I can you know I can tweet, I can and post my photos, Instagram, whatever. So I love that. That's a big difference, and also I can Skype on there. And, you know, back then, when I was traveling, you know, 15 years ago, to make a long-distance call from California to Connecticut, where I grew up, you know, that cost a lot of money. Now you can do it. I can speak all night on the phone, and it's free. Yeah, remember, remember when we all had calling cards, and you got off the plane, and there was a line of people waiting at the, uh, at the phone bank, and, you know, you had, had to huff and puff and act kind of ticked off that you had to actually wait to get on a pay phone? And we all had our MCI calling cards. I, I could do that with my eyes closed. But um, anyway, I, I think that, uh, I mean, I, I get a million travel apps in my email box every single day um, being a, a travel writer. Um, so it's hard for me to say what my favorite one. I know the one that I use the most recently uh, has been Waze, W-A-Z-E. Uh, it's a great app. And I think most people know now that it was recently bought by uh, Google for, I think, a billion dollars. Something like that, but it's a it's a crowdsourced mapping app that uh, that helps drivers. And I think, as most of us know, most business travel actually happens in cars, not on planes. We all like to sit and talk about planes in our frequent flyer programs, but um, most business travel is is in a is in a car. And this is a really handy app to me. It's the new fuzz buster of the new millennium because the the, the most helpful part, at least for me, traveling up and down Highway 101 in California is it alerts you uh, when police are ahead. If someone else sees a police car, there's a button they can tap on their phone, and you know that that cop is, is going to be there or not. And if the cop is gone or if the cop has pulled somebody over, someone else taps the button and says, he's gone. So it's, it's very, very helpful for drivers. Thanks, Chris. What about you, Scott? Uh, one of my favorite apps is uh, one that just came out called Lounge Buddy that tells you where all the nearby uh, airport lounges are. Uh, so when you arrive at an airport, you've got a long layover. You don't know where to go. It gives you some tips. Uh, it give, tells you which amenities are available. And if you're looking for something specific, like a shower, it can tell you which ones have that, how much they cost, things like that. Um, there's another, um, as far as devices go, there's one that I really like. And it's called Power Trip. And it's a USB rechargeable um, device. And so you can plug in your phones and things like that that have a USB port. And you can plug it into a wall to recharge it, and it lasts for hours. And it also includes uh, storage capacity. So you can sort of like a combination backup hard drive and a rechargeable uh, battery pack in one. 
Yeah, Scott, I'm I'm actually desperate to use LaunchBuddy, but I'm an Android guy, and I think so far they're only out for iPhone. But I'm really looking forward to uh, to that one. My own uh, uh, favorite app is probably Uber. Uh, the ability to touch uh, say, uh, to touch a button on my phone and and a car shows up uh, and it takes me where I need to go. And someone like me who can get I said I get lost, uh, then I don't even necessarily have to be the one. Uh, you know, uh, but. Um, uh, but I do think the technology, the Verizon uh, MiFi, uh, the ability to have internet anywhere, and mm -hmm. more importantly, even um, uh, I agree with you on the ability to have power, uh, because all these things drain power. Uh, so, um, you know, I, I, I drain my juice on a long flight, and I can power up my laptop, I can power up my phone at the same time. But all these, but the phone is the one that's become really important. You know, Chris was talking about uh, the calling card, and you go to lugging around a computer and lugging around a laptop, and now so much of this technology is built into uh, the phone, and we have the technology everywhere that we go. And so it's not just uh, stationary technology, it's mobile, and then the mobile becomes social, where you're able to take something like, you know, crowdsourcing and Information uh, like uh, like Chris was talking about, um, and what are what are, what are the future of you know mobile as it moves to social? What uh, social apps um, uh, should we be looking for, uh, Scott? Well, Lounge Buddy like it has a social component that they're developing. Um, I actually never really cared for Twitter, but I've been using it a lot more. I, I see all kinds of ways that. Uh, Companies are still integrating with some of the old stalwarts, like like Twitter and Facebook, finding more creative ways to in involve people. And I think a lot of it is just. Um, I think social is important. I'm not certain that it's that important that you create new social apps, but just finding ways to connect with people and be able to respond promptly. And so there are examples of companies like Starwood, and Hyatt, and American Airlines in particular that are just really good about actively respond to their customers' complaints and criticisms and even compliments as soon as they uh, have them so that those issues get resolved quickly. Great. Um, you know, I'm going to have to... Uh Look out! Check out some of the things that we've been talking about. Certainly, ways. Um, and as soon as I'm able to use Launch Buddy as well, bringing it back full circle. I mentioned earlier I had been looking forward to a long time, and I'd even been tweeting to uh, National Car Rental. You know, I'm really looking forward to the you know to y'all you know, bringing out a mobile app, and they have. Uh, and so I'm going to ask uh, Rob Connors. I'm going to kick it over to him. He's Assistant Vice President of Enterprise Holdings, um, and he's going to be able to get into the details of the mobile app that they've brought out um, and why we're so excited about it. Well, thanks, Gary. I really appreciate that. Yeah, we're, we're very excited about launching the app. And I'll just tell you, one of the things that we, we took our time with was we spent time talking to our frequent travelers when we were building the app so that it wasn't just another travel app on the market. We wanted to make sure that we were putting, uh, you know, products and features in them that really hit this business traveler and that road warrior that we all know frequents the National Car Rental brand. And I'll talk to you just about a couple of features on the app, and then we'll see if you guys have had a chance to actually test it out. But uh, the first one I'll talk about is just called Rental Tracker. And when we talked to our customers and, and we, we got them in a forum, they said, hey, you know what? You guys should know if, I'm, uh, if I've made a reservation, if I'm on rent, if I've just returned, and can't you serve me up information dynamically based on where I am in the trip? So, you know, if I'm about to make a reservation, give me all the information on the location, if I'm on rent, uh, let me know how I can contact you. What car I'm driving was an important thing to them. Uh, give me the ability to contact roadside assistance, extend my rental. I want all of that. And then when I return the car, you know, uh, give me information tells me where you guys are located so I can map it out and figure out how to get back quickly because most of our renters are these frequent business travelers and we're usually in the position where we're either running for a flight or we just got there and we're probably trying to get our way onto an appointment. And the second feature I'll talk to you about real quick is actually coming out in release 1.1, which is next month, and it's something we call the virtual aisle. Gary, you mentioned that you rent from National all the time. We really appreciate that, by the way. But uh, as an Emerald Club member, you know that when you go to a location with the Emerald Isle, you bypass the counter, you go out to the lot, you choose your car, boom, you're on your way. Great product. Our customers absolutely love it. But there are these other locations that we don't have what we call a secured lot meaning that we don't have uh, the tiger teeth in the ground and I don't have the ability to uh, keep the cars, the keys in the car because you could simply drive off the lot with them and uh, I didn't want to be doing that. Rent a lot of cars that way, I just wouldn't get them all back. 
So we have a product coming out we call the Virtual Isle, just for those locations. And it's going to launch in Omaha, Nebraska, Richmond, Virginia, and Tulsa, Oklahoma, and then eventually we're going to expand it to a lot of locations. But it's going to allow you, after you land, uh, you're going to go to your phone. It's going to tell you it's a Virtual Isle location. And since I can't give you that Emerald Isle where you actually go down the row and choose your car, I'm going to let you see a list of available cars on the app that are in the virtual aisle. And you're going to get to select and, and hold your car from there. You're going to walk up to our, our booth, which is located outside in the lot, show us the uh, scan code that's on the phone. We're going to scan it. We're going to hand you the keys to the car that you just chose. So it's us being able to add another element of choice to locations that previously weren't quite able to handle that. So we're very excited about launching both of those. And uh, I'm hoping everybody's had a chance to download the app, and maybe you guys can share with me what, uh, what you've seen. Well, thanks, Rob. Uh, you know, what do yeah, folks wow. think uh, so far about the app? Well, I wasn't able to download it. You don't have it for Windows yet. <laughs> that is a good point. It is coming, though. Windows is coming. We did start sure. with the two biggest platforms, Apple and Android, but Windows is coming. There we go, Chris. I love it. Thank you. All right. I did download it. The, the most important thing I learned, though, in what you were saying there, Rob, is that those metal things are called tiger teeth. I've never heard that one before. Out of the new word of my vocabulary. Call. I'm not um, sure that's a real word or if I made that up. I like I, uh, it. I wrote a I review this morning. I thought it was great. Thanks, Scott. Yeah, that's great. I mean, I mean it, it, it had a... Uh, uh, the great thing about it is that on the on website, website itself, sometimes, sometimes it's so hard, hard to find the things that you're looking for. for. And, and on the app, app it was so much, so much cleaner, cleaner and you see exactly, exactly what we needed without, without all the training stuff. stuff. Great to hear. Thank you. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to break in. Can I break in one more time? Please, please, please. I think the biggest thing and the most important thing on that virtual aisle, I've been hearing that that was coming for a while, but to be able to sit on the plane as soon as you land, look at the app, and pick out the car, that you want that that's that's currently available on the lot that that is, that is that's quite an amazing feat and uh, you know that's always been one of my favorite things about national is it, the, the the ability to pick out your car at the emerald aisle but now to sit on a plane and go hmm you know I think I'll take a sports car today and know exactly uh, what kind of car you're going to get and have them hold it for you is excellent the only thing I would ask and I don't know if this is if, if you have this information on there do you have the mileage of the, of the car so you know, like, is it a young car or an old car? Yeah, we don't. Not out of the gate, but we will eventually. Okay. Yeah. That's a great question, though. Yeah, we, we try to pull in all the information we can. We do have the color, for example, so you can actually see which color the car is. We know some people have a preference on color. I have a so, question also. I couldn't find it on the iPhone. So what's it, what's it under? Was it wasn't under national car. Uh, it's under national car rental. Yeah. yeah. It's under national car. That's okay. right. I yeah, tried. national code should actually pop up when you type in national. It should come right up. And when when was it released? At GBTA or today? It was released actually the Friday before GBTA. Okay, I'll try it again. Yeah, I've actually uh, used it. It was very intuitive. Uh, fortunately, I didn't need the roadside assistance functionality. Um, I suppose I was glad that <laughs> it's there. Do. Um, although I would tell all of our uh, fans out there that uh, if you have a true emergency, dial 911. Uh, <laughs> National uh, will help you uh, after you've done that. Um, but I haven't tried out that feature yet, fortunately. Um, so uh, any other final thoughts? Otherwise, I mean, I thank you all for the insight on the app. I'm going to shift gears a little bit earlier today. Um, with uh, uh, the Road Warrior at uh, co-hosted a uh, national uh, weekly Go Like a Pro Twitter chat, and I was able to participate in that. That was really enjoyable, um, and I got a chance to um, uh, talk about the evolution of tech and travel in the Twitter chat. And we solicited some questions for the Hangout during that chat. So um, we have a featured uh, question. Uh, which is going to be what will the next breakthrough be in tech and travel space or what do you wish it could be? I'm wondering if you all have any uh, opinion on what comes next. I'll go first I guess. Did you see the story? I think it came out today in CNN about the Hyperloop. You're supposed to be able to travel from San Francisco to, El from San Francisco to New York in 45 minutes. I mean no planes? That sounds pretty good. But can I use my miles for that? Uh -huh. hopefully, hopefully, hopefully you'll get you'll rack up miles a lot quicker. <laughs> okay, that's 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 certainly one that sounds like uh, the future, mm -hmm. um, maybe the nearer future. 
uh, or I don't know how far out that's going to be. I don't know. I mean, I think the Segway was supposed to change all of our travels. That didn't quite happen. Yeah. My dream is a little less ambitious. Yep. Um, we were talking about how National will let you reserve a specific car in the lot, and what I'd really like to, and you can reserve a specific seat on an airplane. I'd really like to be able to reserve a specific room in a hotel. Uh, even if you can't choose a suite or something like that, just knowing which floor you're going to be on or how far from the elevator, I think would be really nice. And you that should there is there's a site called Room 77 that is is trying to kind of pioneer and do that for you. They haven't done it at all their hotels, and I I believe Homewood Suites also will let you um, reserve a specific room. They'll show you a map of a hotel, and um, will let you uh, let you reserve the room that way. And as far as, as the, the future is concerned, uh, Johnny Jet stole my idea there. The Hyperloop is, was definitely the big story of the day. Actually, I, I got that story about a month ago since I live here in Silicon Valley, and it, a few people were talking about uh, Elon Musk and how he had sort of whispered about it. I posted it on my blog here called The Bay Area Traveler, and it went viral. And it, to, to date, has been the most popular uh, post I put on on. Uh, on my blog this year. I mean, it just went crazy. I had more comments, more. I, I couldn't. I couldn't believe the traffic that it got. So I think it shows that uh, people are truly interested in, you know, fu the future and and really good ideas like that. I mean, there's a, there's a lot of detractors, but it does really sound like a good idea. So if anybody out there is is wondering what the future is, I would go go Google Hyperloop and see what you see. Great. Uh, thanks everyone for participating in the Hangout. Um, I really enjoyed testing the technology, Howard. learning about it. Um, also, the opportunity to interact with you know folks that I know and respect a lot, and I appreciate everybody who's joined us uh, or who's watching it later. Um, it's a uh, it's it's a really interesting topic, and I also want to thank National Car Rental for bringing all of us together uh, for the great discussion of the evolution of technology and travel. As a reminder, the National Mobile app is available for download in the Apple Store and also at Google Play. Uh, you can go there right now or visit mobileapp.nationalcar.com for more information. And now with uh, the National Mobile app, uh, you can use that. I'll be using it tomorrow myself. Um, and uh, I think we've all talked about the way in which we expect technology to evolve to become much more mobile, much more personalized, uh, with uh, greater speed in our travels, more choice, and uh, greater control as where technology is taking us. So don't forget to follow National Car Rental on uh, Facebook uh, and also on Twitter at National Pro. And thank you all uh, for joining us. And um, with our business travels, we can all go like a pro. I've always wanted to say that. <laughs> so thanks to everyone. Thanks, guys.